Betsy and Tom's here for the American Intelligence Media today. I'm with Thomas, and he's been strutting around all day long saying, I told you so, I told you so, and we know you told us so. You told us like two years ago. And if you were fortunate enough to be in the audience with us, then all this stuff that's happening with the Ukraine right now and Joe Biden, it you already know about it because Thomas told you about it. It was so incredible to see that transcript and see the word crowd strike, Thomas. It was an amazing thing President Trump did. I don't really fully understand it, except that we now see, because of them accusing him of wrongdoing when it was, of course, them, the demon rats who were the wrongdoers, we can see very clearly that they had been invested up to their eyeballs with this. They had three congressmen who'd sent letters threatening to take funding away from Ukraine if they didn't continue to try to find dirt on Trump into 2018. I mean, as we tell you, the coup has not stopped. And we also told you we were the first people who, well, there's that, and then there's the fact that Pelosi used money uh, to try to manipulate Ukraine for the same purposes. So we can see that there's all this corruption, but it's on the demon rat side. Well, I know that once you get started, it's going to be hard to pull this train back. But to give everybody a perspective of where we are with this, back in December 2016, uh, we had been doing a lot of research and were very concerned that the president was not going to get a support from the intelligence communities. And so we set off to do what citizen intelligence we could do to hopefully be somewhat helpful, and if not to Trump himself, but to the supporters, all of his supporters out here. And when we heard about the DNC being hacked by the Russians. It concerned us. And so we set out to find out who did it. And we didn't go to the FBI and we didn't have any help from the CIA. And we found out that the Russians did hack it and they went by the names. And now you take it away, Thomas, because you can take us now from that point at CrowdStrike to the very place we are today with the attempted overthrow of Trump. Yes, and this is, I can't even count how many times I've said this. And again, we're the only ones who seem to notice that if you read Podesta's emails that were leaked, that were given out by WikiLeaks, if you read Hillary's and you see that George Soros was behind them and you see the notes from George Soros and you know what the DNC was being used for, you understand why they had to protect it and couldn't let anybody look at it. But... It was compromised in the spring of 2015, and the FBI came to the DNC and said, you've been compromised, and they said, tough luck, we're, gonna, we're not, don't worry. What they did is Alexandra Chalupa, she also has a sister and a cousin who work with her. She's Ukrainian, but she's a Russian, and she's on the DNC. When it was, the DNC found that there had been this breach, and they knew it was a breach before it was ever a WikiLeaks, by the way, and this is... In their notes, we see it later from the second group of um, WikiLeaks information. So what you can see here is that they knew in 2015, December 15th or 14th, 14th or 15th, that their breach was going to have to cause them to create some kind of smokescreen because there was going to be huge fallout from this. And they had just finished their own study what they actually do oppositional research on themselves. And they'd done their study and found that Hillary's weakest point in terms of risk management was Uranium One involvement, involvement with Russia, involvement with China, basically communism, communism. So what did they say? Well, we have to create a scenario to get us out of this. So they started working immediately. And Alexandra Chalupa did the following. She immediately got her good buddy, Dmitry Alperovich, By the way, that already happened early in the spring also, I believe. I believe Dmitry Alperovich had already gone and put his uh, proprietary system Falcon on the DNC just to find who all was uh, basically stealing information. And at that time that we released that report, you also identified his father, Michael Alperovich, as being a part of this. Which no one to this day, except for an article today that I read, has ever mentioned his name. Dmitry Alperovich and his father were Russian spies, and they were then brought into America, allowed to come into America, and Dmitry was arrested for being a hacker. 
And then they said, okay, we won't put you in jail. Come work for us. So they started working for who? John McAfee. When John McAfee worked for the TIA, the Total Information Awareness Program, which was totally CIA. Well, immediately, Dmitry found that, you know, China had hacked into everything. Russia had hacked into everything. And he, he would show them the footprints of what he found. Well, it so happens that after... Oh, about a year or two of him going um, under the guise of the greatest cyber hacker warrior fighting for America that there ever has been. Lie. It was found out that everything that he supposedly discovered lies. All lies. So go back. All you have to do is read our reports. We give you the very evidence. Then Obama, in his last six years in his administration, used only one cybersecurity company to go after even corporate problems. Then the corporations came to Obama that he would go get Dimitri. And Dimitri, of course, was Sean Owens. They're, they're saying Sean is some big wig. Yeah, Sean, C, FBI, cyber, whatever, which really isn't much. And because, as you know, they can't even uh, supposedly break the code on a phone. And so, yes, Sean Owens, like all of the good ones uh, who are part of the deep state and the shadow government, the globalists, they take their government job, they go out, they do the same thing, they use it against America, and then they charge money for it, huge amounts of money. That's what CrowdStrike is. And don't forget how heavily invested Google is in CrowdStrike. 100 million. We pointed that out in our early reports. Everything coming out now was in our report, and there's much, much more there. So... What we found out was that by coincidence, and this was really hard to figure out, as a matter of fact, we found out every job Michael Alperovich had when he came to America. He went straight to the top with cryptology and became the number one cryptologist in America for the Department of Defense, for the DIA, for the CIA, FBI, for corporations, you name it, he's got all the crypto keys. And his son was literally arrested for being someone who probably use those crypto keys against those corporations and against America. So I suggest that he was nothing more than a thief from Russia, Michael Aperovich, and that he stole the very cryptological codes that he bases, the new crypto codes that he creates for these companies and for elements of our government. Well, he has all those codes. So if you do not add Michael Alperovich into the mix of Dmitry Alperovich, you're missing the mark. And Dmitry three times was on the news, foaming at the mouth how he hates Putin, and he's absolutely certain that it was Putin who hacked the DNC. Nobody hacked the DNC. It was a breach. He put uh, the footprints, as a matter of fact, we know this because the footprints that he says were left on the DNC were also left upon... Well, there was this whole scandal in Ukraine over the artillery using, supposedly being hacked by the Russians. And Dmitry was hired to go and he looked and he said the same thing. He said, oh, no, the Russians, the uh, fuzzy bear, curly bear, whatever, you know, the GRU agents. It's the same nonsense. It's a, it's a footprint you can buy. A junior high school hacker can buy the footprints that Dmitry left on the DNC and upon the Ukrainian artillery uh, military's uh, phone as evidence that it was hacked. And it was a complete scandal. So everything, you cannot find anything that he ever did that later wasn't overturned to, found out, to be found out to be a complete fraud. He is a fraud. But it doesn't mean he doesn't have power. He does have great power. Now, who does he work for? He's the chief um, IT guy for the Atlantic Council. That's the group that makes Russia into the boogeyman. That's the group that is nothing more than an opposition research group against Russia. They try to fire up NATO so that NATO puts in war bombs and says that Russia is the threat, that Russia has hacked every single election in the European Union, that Russia hacked America, that Russia meddled Russia, 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 when we're actually doing great deals with Russia for uranium. And, and, and because we might not get back to it, remember that Sean Henry, who founded CrowdStrike, was formerly with the FBI. Oh, yeah, he was a top FBI cyber warrior. from Right, so all of this is very, it's all wrapped up into one, so you can't open up this can of worms and not have a lot more come out, and we've got, I've got more, I've got a whole page of notes here of things that we need to cover with this, but continue on, Thomas. Well, Alexandra <clears throat> Chalupa was as enthusiastic 
of a zealot as James Comey was. Remember, James Comey was informed immediately. And James Comey got, uh, informed M McCain. And McCain informed all of his Russian assets. Comey brought forth all of his Russian assets, including uh, uh, Alex Sater, including uh, Carter Page, including Sergei you mean Millian. Felix Sater. Felix Sater. Uh, and then uh, Sergei Emilian uh, Perichinko, all of his Russian spies, every one of them. And then you have um, Joseph Mifsud, who they accused of being a Russian spy, who's not. And then you have somebody who's a spy all over the world, and that's uh, Stefan Halper. Then you have, you know, ex MI5, MI6 British agents working in private corporations, which are intelligence groups, which we pointed out, and we. Because we pointed them out, it just so happens that they started closing. I think there have been three of the Cambridge intelligence groups close. And uh, uh, Hackloyd, I think, no longer works. Orbis Business International, they all close. But they always have dummy backup groups. You'll notice on the news today that it wasn't Orbis Business that was paid that money. It was their ancillary company. Well, here's the way that it went. Alexandria Chalupa, just like James Comey, said, oh, don't worry, I can take care of it. We'll just reverse that Russia thing like they always do because the Democrats have absolutely no creativity. And we'll say the other side are with the Russians instead of the fact that we have 100% on the Democrat side with Hillary sold out to the Russians, including with John Podesta, with Jewel uh, Energy Unlimited, with uh, three or four deals that they had. But remember, John Podesta and his brother, John never, never stopped working at the Podesta brothers, and John Podesta and Tony did the same exact deal that Paul Manafort and Rick Gates did with the three Ukrainian oligarchs. As a matter of fact, they worked together. But we just heard yesterday that the Podesta brothers had all charges dropped on them, as I told you would happen because they were given immunity. That's what I assume, but I imagine that we are correct. What happened to Gates? He's rotting in jail. What happened? No, I mean, excuse me. Manafort. Manafort's rotting mm -hmm. in jail, and Gates turned on Manafort, and he got off kind of easy. It ain't over, because what we see here is that Ukraine was involved from the beginning. Now, here's what people forget. This is in testimony, both from uh, John Brennan, the head of the CIA at the time, of the coup uh, during the uh, meddling in the election, and Victoria Nuland, the head of the State Department for uh, Ukraine, but also for the East. Uh, she had large responsibilities. She herself said that the two George Soros-inspired, New Democracy-inspired, CIA-inspired, rogue CIA-inspired color revolutions in Ukraine, both the Orange Revolution and the Maidan Revolution, cost... Victoria Newland, $4.7 billion. That's what she said. She said this on the news. She said it a number of times in the news. And she said it somewhere in testimony. Um, I can't remember who it was before. But the point is, is that they were fully aware that they were investing in the party of the regions, the same exact oligarchs that Manafort and the Podesta brothers were supporting. Here's the only problem. Manafort took the money out of the same offshore Cyprus account, the same place where the Podesta brothers have their money to this very day. But he brought it back into the country, and somehow I noticed this when it happened, and said, oh, no, 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 that's really bad. He's going to get caught for that. And it was for his daughter buying a house in New York. And I said, no, no, no. And this was during the time that uh, he was working for Trump because he's the president maker here in America and obviously even in the Ukraine and other places. So he has great power somehow with his PR or with his connections. I don't know. But he's made three presidents here in America. He helped make those three presidents. And so Manafort was framed by Alexandra Chalupa early on for stealing $27 million from Ukraine from the World Bank. Total lie. She came up with false ledgers. Does anybody remember this? It was in, it's in our report back at the moment well, that it happened. I would I would rather talk about some of the recent things that we're finding oh, out here. This is a big story. Anyway, okay. Yes, you're right. We got to catch up to the big story of the recent now, but we got to point this out. Twenty seven million dollar fake ledger that was thrown out because everybody found out it was fake. Then it was a call from a diplomat in Estonia who said she had. 
a film of Trump, a compromising film of Trump, and that Russia had the same compromising film of Trump in a hotel room with horse. Okay, it was a call. No film. Though John Brennan then put out basically a uh, wanted ad and Sergey Millian went over to Europe and for, oh, six, eight months traveled around until he came up with a very bad tape. He got paid $100,000 for it. I don't know how many other people John Brennan paid for that because there was no evidence. John Brennan testified. There was no evidence to start Crossfire Hurricane. No Okay, we're beating the dead horse. Our audience no, already this is knows critical. that. I want to talk about this recent stuff with BuzzFeed and Soros. I want to talk about the Joe Biden connection over there with the Privy Council, about the U.S. aid money being used, and John Kerry's son. I want to talk about what they're not talking about. The biggest story here not being covered is that along with Hunter Biden, his roommate from college and Christopher Hines... John Kerry's stepson, were in on the same two deals. It's in Schweitzer's book. How come nobody's mentioning this? It's the biggest story. John Kerry, who literally was in bed with the Iranian uh, Aziz, who literally said that he paid Kerry off and that he paid many politicians off. And then you can see all the politicians from the House. That's the reason they're so nervous. Many Democrats from the House went over to Iran and they were paid off. And we know this. We also know that they allowed in, I forget the exact amount, but a huge amount of Iranian spies. We're now arresting those spies and kicking them out of our country. Well, all they have to do is go to John Kerry. He's got the list. John Kerry, of course, with Hillary Clinton and Obama, $150 billion to Iran. Okay, that's that's what they're part of what they're trying to cover up. But okay, Biden. By Christopher Hines and Biden. Biden got the highest award given to anybody anywhere in Ukraine for anything. And he literally did the Heil Hitler sign afterwards. And why? Because he was over there working with those exact same three oligarchs who worked with Manafort and Podesta. This is what they do with all the satellite countries of Russia. They become homes of uh, oligarchs who are really mafia, who are really agents of Goldman Sachs. Well, just as Trump pointed out, why was the $1.5 billion deal done by Biden and Christopher Hines in uh, in China when it should have been Goldman Sachs? How did Goldman Sachs not get that deal? They get all the deals. How did others didn't, you know, the ones who really do those deals, because Hunter Biden knows nothing about that. And by the way, as Trump pointed out, that's the only deal that's really gone through with the Chinese. How come that's the only deal that really went through? Now, well, see, the thing is, is the uh, the globalists want to take out Biden now. They got to knock him out to make way for uh, herpes Hillary. You know, I think you're right. And so they thought they thought, well, they'll just take Biden out. But what they don't realize that they're that's also exposing Chris Hines, but it's also exposing um, the Romneys. Yes. Yes. Well, well, let's go back for a second to Hunter Biden and his cocaine and his being uh, kicked out of uh, the military and uh, his uh, uh, rape charges. His. uh, We just don't have time for all the. I'm just pointing out. This is just the tip of the iceberg. How about the fact that he had sex with his brother's wife? Okay, this guy is the lowest scum on the face of the earth. But when he looks below him. He sees his father, the ultra lowest pedophile scumbag, uh, sexual assaulting person that has ever been in politics, uh, open politics here in America. So Biden went and he, of course, we see all of this. Don't be worried about this. So Biden, uh, you know, he threatened to take away a billion dollars from the United States AID. So the U.S. aid is $86 $86 billion controlled out of the State Department. Oh, guess who was in the State Department at that time? John Kerry. And guess who was there just before setting the policies for John Kerry to follow? That would be Hillary Clinton. And so when he said he was going to take that money away, he had no authority to do so. But he certainly has Hillary in his pocket. Why? Because I think you're right. I think from the beginning, Hillary knew she couldn't withstand a long 
campaign. No way. Right. She, she can't do it. So she was putting Biden up. Now, what did Biden say from the beginning? I can't do it. I got to ask my family. I got to ask my son. Why does he have to ask his son? He has to ask his son how the cocaine charges are going, how uh, how the deal in Russia is going. Is it really going to keep the family uh, wealth going? Uh, is it you know going to let Joe rest so he doesn't have to run for politics? Joe's so stupid that he doesn't know Hillary. He doesn't know Hillary's playing him. Okay, okay or or Soros because now you've got Soros and BuzzFeed coming in for a kill shot with Biden. Yes, the uh, organization that's putting up the money for the whistleblower who already has $65,000 in a GoFundMe account, and they're they're coordinating that. Excuse me, why is the CIA spying on Americans on American soil? Uh, precisely. CIA in the White House, that's an oxymoron. You're not supposed I to mean, have that Hello? Happen. What do they but think? We're dumb wits out here? We just And had... we actually know that it's not just the CIA. It's five eyes. It's the Brits. It's also, well, I, we've got to jump back there, but it's the FBI put in three spies, one after the next, on the National Security Council. So now we find that the whistleblower is going to expose the fact that he was probably placed, or she, as a spy. We don't know who these people are. When you hear their names, you go, well, they weren't doing anything. Yeah, they were spying. Who are they reporting to? They were reporting to James Comey. They were reporting to John Brennan. So this has come out, but we want to interject that in the six hours that Biden gave to the Ukraine to fire that lawyer, which they did, he had British allies call in to Ukraine to threaten them. Now, what's so big about this, folks, is this This was just one little sentence at the bottom of an article that we posted. And I thought that that was the most revealing sentence right there. There is a UK connection here. And it came in the cash that came with John Solomon. And whenever you say John Solomon, you're going to have to say uh, the British Queen's Privy Council, because that information didn't all come out in one day. No way possible. And there's no way that some of that information came out. It's not, it, it hasn't been treated appropriately. And John Solomon is nothing more than a shill for the people who want to act like they're on Trump's side. And same thing with Sarah Carter. He, he, he's a Cecil Rhodes devotee or whatever, student of Cecil Rhodes. You can't trust this guy. This is John Solomon you're talking about, Fox yes, News. Absolutely. We've told people all along, he is a shill for the queen. He'll only take you so far. And right now his mission, probably got it directly from George Soros, is you got to take out Biden. Because we got to make the way for Hillary. This huge release by John Solomon, most of it doesn't even concern right. this issue right now that concerns mm-hmm. Ukraine and impeachment. It's complete. Uh, how all of those things could have come out all at one time is not possible. That shows that he is being manipulated and he doesn't even know what he's talking about. And just as you say, he's not revealing the things that I'm telling you no. and we're telling you and have been telling you and our intelligence reports have been telling you. Is and he talking about Richard Dearlove and Jeffrey Patty? And who did you think? Who do you think that Joe Biden called over there in the UK? Anybody in the Privy Council? Let's put Victoria Nuland on the stand and ask her why she paid $4.7 billion to create two overthrows of a duly elected president. Same president, by the way, Viktor Yanukovych, who Paul Manafort put in power even after they kicked him out in the Orange Revolution. Paul Manafort got him back in as president. I mean, how good is that? But they weren't the guys who were going to be the oligarchs that could be controlled by Biden and by John Kerry and by the Clintons and by everybody else. Remember, they're... Okay, let me frame this. Anytime you talk about any of this, because those are the old schoolers, there's always oil involved. So what's the oil? Who put sanctions on Russia for Russian meddling when he said that they did not affect one single vote in America? And when we found out what the meddling was, uh, 65% of it was done after the election, and a very, very, very small percent of the rest was even aimed at Trump or Hillary. And it wasn't done by them. It was done by the Global Engagement Center, the Strategic Communications Laboratory, which is a British company. We've pointed this out. They own Cambridge Analytica. Point is that what was really going on was that they have to cover up for what they were doing. They thought they were going to be in power with Queen Hillary and that was going to be the end of everything. NAFTA was going to roll. uh, Tips was going to roll. Everything was going to roll. It was going to be total globalism. From now on, there'd be no more presidents of the United States of America. She'd have two terms and then it would just be rolled into a, a, a section, a union, like the European Union. 
and which would, of course, have South America, Central America, and Canada in it so that the Brits could control it. But my point was to interject. It was the Brits who twisted the arms of the Ukrainians. They knew that uh, Trump, I mean, that Biden was twisting their arm, that Trump was innocent. They knew that because they knew Alexander Chalupa. They came forward and tried to give all that information to America during that time, and it was refused. So they have been begging to come forth with this. Well, Alexandra Chalupa is the one who did these setups. She's the one who created highly likely, and that's why you're going to find deeper, deeper connections than we've even told you, but I can start to tell you who they will be right now. You're going to find that it was out of Ukraine that the British were actually controlling the Russian meddling nonsense. And the reason I know that is because later Comey used a Romanian saying he was Russian, who was in jail. And then he used another Russian who was in a Czechoslovakian jail. And then he tried to use Kim.com. And then he tried to use Made Up Goose for 2.0. But when we all know it was Imran Awan. We know that for a fact. We have all the evidence. We have all the IT people's uh, reports on what the uh, uh, Awan family was doing. We know that Nancy Pelosi ordered... 80 people in Congress to turn over all their machines and all their passwords to M1 R1, who was then running it through uh, Basira's office. And that's the very server that Trump is talking about. So when you're talking about Ukraine, you're talking about Dmitry Alperovich's crowd strike because he was Chalupa's best friend and he was the IT person for Atlantic Council. So if you wanted to go and come up with an anti- uh, Russian cam- uh, disinformation campaign to smear Trump, who would you go to? Alexander Chalupa in Ukraine. And we know that tons of money, taxpayer money, was put into creating this entire attempt of a coup against Trump and also to meddle in the election. This also opens the door up for us to look at the Romneys, because here we we see that uh, Romney's former advisor is exposed as, and I'm, I hope I don't pronounce this incorrectly, Burisma board member. Of course, uh, a lot of cor- uh, corruption there. But I was more intrigued by Rona McDaniel. Now, she's the head of the uh, GOP, and I'm sorry, but I did not fall off the turnip truck. Your name, girl, is Romney. You are there holding your position for your uncle and the corruption that exists. I'm, I can't believe that nobody is talking about it. She tweets out something about Joe Biden and says, well, his son was cashing in on shady business deals in Ukraine and China and blah, blah, blah. And so she feigns concern about Joe Biden's corruption. But her uncle Mitt and her cousin Tag operate rigged election machines. Why isn't she talking about Bain Capital and her Uncle Mitt's corrupt deals with Riggs Feldman Bank and with Barrett Gold? I mean, she talk about throwing stones in a glass house. And why is this woman the head of the GOP? If you were able to combine one of the most evil men of history, George H.W. Bush, with another one of the most evil men of history, John McCain, you would have Mitt Romney. Because... Mitt Romney goes back to Daddy Bush and when he, Bain Capital ended up inheriting and getting the money that came through Velmet Bank in Russia when Russia was taken down by the Vulcans. That's how far Romney goes back. He is more corrupt than just about anybody. He might as well be a a Bush family member. That's what we like to say. And so Riggs Bank, Riggs Bank, believe it or not, that's what they called it, uh, they they shuffled this money out of uh, Russia, and that's what caused... There were two collapses, and both of them were economic collapses. So if they tell you they were political, that's nonsense. George Soros and Leo Wanta were involved with the uh, rogue CIA in the first one, the Vulcans. And then after that, in Azerbaijan, another uh, attack on Russian uh, currency and Russian economy. That money came to Bain Capital, and Bain Capital bought uh, Smartmatic. They bought uh, InterCivic... Uh, Heart inter civic. Right. I mean, she has to know that her uncle Mitt and cousin Tag rig elections with their buddy George Soros. Therefore, she needs, by law, she must to, report it. What? What did she have to do? Well, she's part of campaign corruption. Her 
uh, her own relatives own the machines that we know give bad counts. And, and then, we know and then you have patriots out here who think the RNC is a good place to put your money. Don't give your money to the RNC. Ronald Romney's going to give it to these people that are rhinos and rats to run against the, uh, their constant never Trump campaigns. This campaign cycle, you give your money directly to Donald J. Trump. He knows what to do with it. Mitt Romney didn't have a chance in hell to get elected. This is what happened. And we told you this is happening. And we pointed out he went around to every, well, first to the Secretary of State and then to every person who was reporting to the Secretary of State from every county in an old beat up Buick. And he was always seen getting into his trunk, getting envelopes out of it when he would go in to see these people. He paid off those people to get him elected. Simple and plain. Why? Because he didn't own the machines in Utah, but he did have access to Optech, so he was able to manipulate the vote. But it would have been noticed if it was manipulated unless he had paid those people off. And he drove around in this old beat-up car. Okay, Mitt Romney has horses that are worth millions of dollars doing dressage in the Olympics. He never reported what his income was. Let's see his tax income. Let's see his time at Bain Capital. Let's see Bain Capital's investment in uh, Smartmatic. Let's see, inve- let's see in cap- uh, Bain Capital's investment in all the things that Hillary Clinton did from Rose Law Firm, from the QRS 11 right up to modern times, including the election machine. So nobody gets more corrupt than him. Now, why is he out there uh, complaining? Because he knows that when he ran for president, he had someone directly connected who was sitting on the board of a Ukrainian oil company, the same one that Hunter Biden said. I mean, that's absurd. That's like saying Olag Deripaska is my uh, campaign manager. Well, he might as well have been because he gave more millions than anybody else that was legally recorded giving money, but he did it through what? Fusion GPS. He did it through Penn Capital Group, uh, group Penn Quarter Group, uh, and uh, Daniel Jones. And so you can say, you know, uh, how about Bill Browder? How about Leo Bravotnik? Okay, but no. So when you say, oh, uh, Mitt Romney had a Ukrainian, well, he's Ukrainian, he's not Russian. That's stupid. That's really stupid. Let's remember, it was the sanctions Obama put on Russia that caused all these problems in Ukraine that caused the oligarchs to come back into power to get rid of a duly elected president twice. That's what's going on here, folks. It's called the Purple Revolution in America. It was called the Orange Revolution, the Maidan Revolution in Ukraine. Will any of that come out? I'm only starting. This could go on for... uh, Oh, listen, any time that I call out Rona, people go, oh, but she's such a sweet person and she, she gave such a nice speech and Trump has such nice tweets to say about her. Really? Patriots. She knows that her uncle and George Soros and TAG rig elections. She takes our vote. She knows that they take our vote and they fractionalize it. They rig elections. She's silent. I don't care how nice her speeches are. She's got to go. Who was the spy in the White House to begin with? Reince Priebus, the previous head of the Republican National Committee. To become the head of the Democrat National Committee like uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz or Donna Brazil or Perez, or if you're going to become the national uh, for uh, the Republicans, you have to be corrupt. You have to be corrupt. You couldn't have got there. And what are you the most corrupt about? Money and fake elections and throwing votes and manipulating the Electoral College. And that's what she's there to do. So you are absolutely right about that. It's kind of like when you look at a Liz Cheney, if you don't get the hair on the back of your neck rising Hello, up. There is people. something wrong this with you. This is Dick Cheney's daughter. Dick Demon Cheney. His daughter is there. And, and, and believe me, she's another one. And Chelsea Clinton. Oh, she made out big too. Chelsea is, if we named, we have. Out of college, $600,000, I think was her salary. Well, that was for one board. Yeah. Uh, which she didn't attend any of. And she had no skill in that area. And yet that board controls communication. So that board controls the votes that control the biggest corporations that decide which crypto keys to buy. So they make, she makes sure that her mother's company (laughs) used to be called Entrust. 
now uh, Regency Walker runs it, and I forget what it's called. It's moved back to California so they could act like they're a, an American company instead of working out of Shanghai. She made sure that they got their contracts. So she, she sits on these boards to go to vote, and she doesn't even know what she's voting on. And she's a complete imbecile, and so's her husband, and anything they've ever done has been a failure. And remember when she said out loud to everybody, oh my gosh, a lawyer came, told me that my parents are the most corrupt people on the face of the earth. They proved it to me. They said that if I don't get out of these foundations, I'm going down with them. That was when there were five investigations of the Clinton Foundation, all coordinated by Andrew McCabe during the time that there were four investigations on Andrew McCabe. By the way, to my knowledge, of those nine investigations, none have ever been finished. So that's the kind of thing that was going on. And, you know, when you look at who is a member of the Clinton Foundation, like McAuliffe, you know, Terry, uh, uh, you know, Terry McAuliffe and his wife, Jill, and the, the way that they stole the money from the state before McAuliffe got out and the way they uh, funneled the money that was stolen during the um, primaries for Hillary, stolen from Bernie, that was funneled also to Jill as a payoff for Uranium One because Andrew McCabe was in charge of hiding everything concerning Uranium One for 10 years. And Hillary knew that was her most vulnerable point. And by golly, look, no one wants to talk about it now. It is such criminality and no one wants to even talk about it. That's what's driving the Ukraine. That's what drove the sanctions, Obama putting sanctions on Russia so that the pipeline couldn't go through Ukraine, so that this entire explosion would happen in Ukraine. And what happened? Two of their provinces decided to go with Russia because they didn't want the Nazis ruling then the party of regions, the party of Joe Biden, the party of Hunter Biden, the party of Chris Hines. No, they duly had a democratic vote and decided to secede from Ukraine. Well, if Ukraine could do it to USSR, why can't provinces do it to Ukraine? And so when Russia said, yeah, we support that, a war was started. That's when Dmitry Alperovitch was called in. For what? Cyber propaganda. When DNC needed to have a fake story, he was called in. And who is his number one enemy? Russia, Russia, Russia. And he knows that Putin is the evilest man on earth and he wants to do Putin in. He foams at the mouth when he speaks about Putin. This is the only man in the Joint Intelligence Committee, uh, Joint Intelligence Report on Russian interference of December 2016. The only thing quoted was half a paragraph of a, a, a couple broken paragraphs that Dmitry had turned in as his analysis of the DNC server without ever looking at it looking at it over the phone using this proprietary system Falcon, which then he installed there and he installed at the DCC, at the DCCC and all throughout Washington, blah, blah, blah. So to this very moment, it just came out, oh, it just came out, Dmitry Alperovitch, they don't name it, it's called Falcon. His proprietary system for CrowdStrike is listening in everywhere. So when Imran Awan stopped, Dmitry Alperovitch came in, and if Dmitry Alperovitch couldn't find that Imran Awan already had complete access to the server and everybody's everything, uh, as a matter of fact, when he was fired for his what, the worst espionage in U.S. history, he was fired on the Capitol Hill. Debbie Wasserman Schultz raised his position to being a consultant head IT guy so that he could still work at the DNC, so he could protect those servers that he had sending blind... CCs to China and everyone else who was pay to play. And that's what Hillary was trying to hide. And the big deal is, they say, in Ukraine, because Joseph Mifsud, and, and this, Trump said it too, Joseph Mifsud was offering Joseph Papadopoulos and Sam Clovis and a few other people, all 33,000 Hillary deleted emails. Okay, where were they? Who had them? Well, we know that. Uh, Comey had two copies of them, one on a disc, uh, six discs, and one on a jump drive. We know that Chris uh, Ray testified he still has them. So they had them, and that was part of the setup. That was the frame up. They were going to literally give them to him and then get him coming back into the country, arrest him. Oh, you have them, la di da. The, supposedly, there's another set of them in the Ukraine. And that would make sense that uh, Hillary gave a copy to Alexander Chalupa to make them show up there so that if they got either the guy in Czechoslovakia or the guy in Romania, to say that they would admit to hacking the DNC 
and then they were going to release them to Russia and, and give them a full account and take care of them, you know, basically witness protection kind of thing, but they're liars. Well, they had to have the 33,000 emails if those guys were going to give them to somebody who was going to give them to Joseph Mifsud. So it's not just Britain who intervened with Joe Biden. It's not just Italy who was part of the coup. It was Ukraine. And now the new Ukrainian people running the country who are not Nazis want to help us and want to help Trump. And if you listen to the transcript from Ukraine, uh, the conversation between Trump and uh, Zelensky, what does it say? Three-fourths of it is him praising Trump as being his teacher, his leader, the leader of the world. I mean, these are the most complimentary things you've ever heard. He brought up the Javelin missile system. Trump dodged that and said, hey, by the way, can you help us with CrowdStrike? Not can you help me go after Joe Biden? There's already investigations on that. Rudy Giuliani and two other lawyers have already been over there. But CrowdStrike? For a long time. Opens up a can of worms, and it's going to be a fun year. Could you say a few things about all this impeachment stuff that's going on? Well, they tried to meddle in the election. It didn't work. They tried to rig the count. It didn't work. They tried to steal President-elect Trump's stuff and use it against him. Didn't work. Went after his lawyers. Yeah, he has corrupt lawyers. He was in New York. Didn't work. Went after the corrupt people around him who helped him with some of his deals. Mm, didn't work. 28 treasonous crimes of Comey didn't work. So what happened? Comey perjured himself in an attempt to get immunity so he would be fired by lying to Trump about a non-investigation, which there were multiple investigations, especially a very serious coup d'etat going on, a counterintelligence investigation, and Trump knew about it, and he got Comey at least six different times saying there was none. Well, that was so he could get a special counsel so there could be what? impeachment. And the special counsel was to cover all the trails of the guilty ones. And so 400 people were questioned. The only ones we know about were the few Republicans whose lives were ruined. The rest, oh, every one of them was guilty. From Joseph Mifsud to Stefan Rowe to, St to Sergei Milian Parashenko, all the ones we've told you about. So uh, the special counsel, impeachment. The uh, Robert Mueller coming in his testimony, it was supposed to be impeachment. The second part of Mueller's investigation, special counsel investigation, was supposed to indicate impeachment so that the House at both, uh, well, we'll just call him out, little Adam Schiff, uh, uh, crazy Jerry Nadler and Cummings, uh, they have the right. Yes, they will. They could impeach Trump for no reason whatsoever, and that's okay. But this is the way that it works. It has to come out of Nadler's committee. Okay, we've already seen so much nonsense there that it does, nothing's going to stop it. He's going to call for a vote. It's going to be voted on. First off, there is no impeachment, and there is no uh, congressional House vote allowing an investigation. So already it's doomed to fail. But they knew they had to do this because it's their last-ditch attempt. They have nothing else, and so they're all sticking their necks out because it's the uh, extinction event for the Democratic Party. Now... They know that this isn't going to go anywhere because they didn't follow due form. They've already had two impeachments put on the floor by Al Green, both of which failed horribly, miserably. So they know it's not going to work. They already know there's 30 Democrats who say, no, they're not voting for impeachment. If all of them don't vote, it probably won't happen. But they're supposed to vote, and then it goes to the committee. The committee is supposed to do an investigation. If there's anything bad, then they are supposed to bring that content to the House, convince the House, the House then votes, and if the vote, House votes, it can then go to the Senate, where the Supreme Court, John Roberts, the evil John Roberts, would sit there and conduct an investigation. What will happen? The Senate's not going to vote, not going to vote for impeachment. It's a complete waste of time. All of this, complete waste of time, does not matter if it was the best blue sky scenario for the Democrats. Ain't going to happen. Why is it not going to happen? Not only because there's no content, it's because it's already been tried. Everything's already been tried by Mueller. If there was anything they could have gone after, they would have. And so, uh, Stormy Daniels, don't worry about that. Don't worry about the state taxes. Don't worry about his university. Don't worry about emolument. Don't worry about none of that. It ain't going to happen. Is impeachment going to happen? 
It's certainly they if though there it's a three ring circus. Their hair is all on fire. If they don't stand up for something, it's going to be noticed that they're standing up for nothing. And then they believe right now the the word on the street is 38 Democrats will not vote for impeachment for even to be investigated. That's why it happened the way it did. And sorry, Kevin McCarthy, you bimbo, excuse me, you bad person, you shouldn't have called for the vote. Because they did, they knew they well, wouldn't win the vote. So what did they do? They a tabled the U.S. Chamber of Commerce yes. rhino. Oh, he's. I totally mean, why would you even think he's a good guy? I know. And he's another reason why you should not give your money to the Republican National Committee because they keep these never Trumpers in, and they keep them funded. So it was going to come to the House, and it was going to lose. So what did Kevin McCarthy do? The only person there that has the right to call the question which means you call for the vote. So they knew they wouldn't win the vote. So uh, an action that supersedes that is to table the question. So the question was tabled and they voted to table the question acting as if every Democrat that voted to table it voted for impeachment. That's not true. They voted to table it because they're going to lose. They're going to lose their next election. If they attempt impeachment and it fails, the 38 who are not for it, Democrats in the House, will lose. Okay, so that's what happened. It's now been kicked to uh, Nadler's committee illegally. Nadler's already committed crimes. Uh, Schiff has already committed crimes. They've already perjured themselves. They've already invented evidence. They've lied, stolen. They've been scammed. They have tampered with witnesses. You name it. There's no way this impeachment can possibly in any way harm Trump. It's only going to help Trump. The Trump effect. It's not going to be impeachment. It's going to be peachy.